Hey, this is Sasha, and in this week's video, what I want to share with you is how to make this exact YouTube thumbnail. So if you don't know how to make a YouTube thumbnail, I'm going to share with you how to make this YouTube thumbnail using Photoshop. Uh, it's not too difficult, just putting together a few little elements. And if you have a subscription to Photoshop on the web there, it's, it's just a handful of dollars per month for the Creative Cloud version. It'll really uh, increase your potential to working within your business and creating a lot of design elements and just a great tool to have all around, especially if you're working online. So in either case, it's not too difficult. I'm gonna share with you step-by-step step how to make this. Uh, we're not gonna go into the intricate details of every tool and how to use Photoshop, but I'll give you some insights of how I'm pu putting elements together and creating a YouTube thumbnail for my videos. So let's get started. So the first thing that I need to do is set up the canvas, which would be going into File, New, or hitting Control N on your keyboard. Once you do that, you'll be able to set up a canvas. Now here, um, 1280 by 720 is the standard YouTube thumbnail size that they recommend. You could do 1920 by 1080 if you wanna be ahead of the game for HD thumbnails. Uh, but 1280 by 720 will work. In fact, both of them will work. That is the standard uh, size. So that's the one we're gonna use right now. So as you can see here now, I have my canvas that's up and it's white. So as I zoom out um, and start looking at this canvas, now we need to start filling this canvas in with some detail. So here, as I look into this canvas, uh, you know, you have to kind of have an idea of what you want, a background and things like that. But you can see right here, we have one layer that's a background layer. If I go ahead and create a new layer, there's our uh, secondary layer. So what I could do, in fact, is now put in a thumbnail image. So maybe that's the first thing I want to do. So I'm going to head on over over to my uh, picture area, and I'm just going to drag that in here right there. So what I'll do is now hit enter, pop in my picture. If you don't have a green screen picture or if you don't have um, an image that you want to use, you know, you could just simply make it text and just bypass this step. Now the next step I'm going to do is right click this and I'm just going to rasterize the layer just so I can play with it and make it a little bit uh, more friendly, get rid of this green screen, which basically what I did was take a lot of pictures uh, with the green screen and have a variety of shots. So I'm going to go ahead and select this green. Actually, I'll change the tolerance level to about 35, which will allow me to select a little more green. I'll hit shift. I'll select a little more green. I'll hit shift, a little more green, hit shift right there. And now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and also um, go ahead and hit the rectangle box, hit shift, select this, and just select any uh, top, bottom, and other corners just in case there's any little leftover green spots. So now that I have it right there, if you hit the mask button right there, you can see that I go away. So what we need to do is go ahead and select and go to inverse or uh, shift, control, and I, and now it selects the opposite of that, and then I can hit that mask button. So when I do that, you can see it's just me, okay? So now I can go ahead and manipulate this, okay? So I might be able to move this over here, and if I want to, I can go ahead and uh, make image adjust and make it a little bit brighter. So my brightness is on the other screen since I use multiple monitors, so there it is. So I could brighten that up a little bit if I want, uh, pop in a little contrast. If I want to adjust any tone, I uh, could do color balance. Again, add a little more yellow to the skin tone, add a little more blue. Just depends uh, what you kind of want um, as far as the skin tones go. So again, a little bit playing here for you if you want. And uh, other than that, you know, once you're good to go, what you need to do is create kind of a background. Now, uh, one of the easiest way to do that is again, create a new layer. And then what you can do is you can pull a color off of the shirt, off of an image, something like that. And then, you know, take maybe another color and you can take the gradient tool right there and just simply do kind of like a drag effect right there. Uh, either doing a gradient with a circle, doing a gradient kind of with just a linear gradient. You know, if you do a circle, it's going to have kind of a circle gradient like that. Okay, so it just depends what type of effect you're looking to do. Um, you know, but that's ultimately the simplest way and simplest approach. If you want something a little bit different, 
if you want kind of a gray or darker gray effect, you could do something like this. I'm just going to show you. So there's kind of a gray effect right there. And now what you do is add in some um, add in some text. So I could go ahead and just click this, make it white, and then go ahead and type in my text. Now, oftentimes with the text, you might do it on multiple lines so that way you can modify and manipulate it. So if I was to write in some text here for my thumbnail or for the video that you're creating, uh, let's just say how to get and uh, I'll go ahead and just reduce this to maybe a zero on the width and we'll just leave it like this. I'll duplicate this layer a couple times. How to get, and I could say more Facebook. And then another one uh, was right here. And then we'll just do the likes. Okay, so now what you could do is just hit, um, when you hit the transform key, okay, so the arrow up here at the top, you can hit control T and that'll bring up the transform box and you can hold shift and alt and drag it and that'll kind of resize it. So what you could do is then, uh, you know, create the text and make it the sizing that you want, okay? So here you can see what I'm doing and you're just basically playing with the sizings that are available. Okay, so if I wanted to get rid of this, and you can see that as I play with this, maybe I just want Facebook on one line. Okay, again, I could drag it. Of course, I could just um, change the font size as well. Okay, I could compress certain things if that's not going well. Uh, reduce the font size or reduce the, um, the spacing in between each line. Okay, so... So now you can see I'm slowly just playing with it. I could move the photo as well, a little to the side, a little to down like this, move this over here, and then this maybe over here. So now if you want it a little bit, let's say you want a blue effect or something like that, I could go ahead and create another layer create a box right here, very simple. Take a blue effect, whatever the color you want is, you select it. I could go ahead and edit and fill with that color, okay? My foreground color, okay? So now I have this blue effect. Go back to the rectangle area and just kinda get rid of some of those areas and, and tone it down, okay? Just for the text. So that's kinda how you do a basic thumbnail for YouTube and um, you could even lower the opacity, make it a little more see-through right there. Um, you know, pretty simple. You know, if you want to put like a Facebook logo or some textures in the back, you could also do that with some brushes. Um, if you really wanted to make things completely different, what you could also do is change the background. So for example, like right now I just did a gradient background, uh, but instead what you could do is use like a wallpaper background. So here when I search for uh, wood backgrounds or wood wallpapers, you can see there's a lot of different uh, textures and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is just pull one in here just to give you an example. Obviously you wanna make sure that the text or the pictures that you use are copyright free or you give credit. But again, this is just an example. So here I went ahead and put that background in there. What I could do is just change the opacity just slightly to kind of reduce it again a little bit to give it that wood effect. So there you go. So that kind of gives you a little bit more insight to a thumbnail. Um, also, if I go into adding maybe like an arrow or anything like that, uh, I typically have assets or collections of things that I have. So uh, what I might also want to do is uh, again, put in something like an arrow, a circle, uh, whatever it is, so you could go ahead and uh, you know put in like different elements and things like that um, in there as well. And then I'll go ahead and right click, uh, change the blending styles. So I could do a color, make it more yellow. You know, just to just to give it more attention for what I'm doing. Again, this this all just depends on your thumbnail, but you can see how that thumbnail really transforms very quickly. And now how to get uh, Facebook likes. 
now you can have a little video whether that's how to get more Facebook likes you could change that right there pretty easily how to get more Facebook likes and now what you'll do is just move this over okay change this text reduce this a little bit add that space could probably reduce the font size on that one right there more Facebook likes and if you need to make that adjustment you could change the the blue background you know just go a little bit wider right there by selecting the rectangle tool and deleting that so there you go making little adjustments and you have a great thumbnail for YouTube all right thanks for joining me I hope you enjoyed this video if you want to see more training videos for your business and continue watching with me then just click the thumbnail right over here and you'll continue learning with me but if you want to sign up to my newsletter list where I share with you some exclusive training to grow your business then just click the button over here on the other side and you'll be taken to that sign up page Thanks again for joining me. In the end, remember, do what you love, contribute to other people, but most importantly, live life abundantly. I'll see you next time.